So how do you know, like how do you determine um, that you have the correct product market fit? And there's a great test that a gentleman named Sean Ellis did. He's a researcher in the lean startup movement, which is building companies using agile development. So build, test, measure, meaning instead of gathering investment, building a business plan, and then launching, he developed a new way of building a business, which was build, test, measure. Build slowly, test components of the business, build more, test components of the business, build more. And so he is saying, for, you know, when 40% of your users are returning month over month, you've got a really viral, really strong, validated business model. Because 40% of the people that you have reached month over month, whether it's traditional business or online, come, are coming back month over month, you are on to a strong business model. And the second question he asks uh, in surveys to these used to his customer groups, or how would you feel if you could no longer use this product or service? So think for stuff for a second and think of that one product that you love, absolutely love, you cannot do without. Whether it's a Blackberry, an iPhone, your coffee in the morning, uh, I don't know, it's a dog food, I'm not sure, whatever it is. Think of that one product you can't live without. How would you feel if you could no longer use it? Would you feel very disappointed, somewhat disappointed, not disappointed? Or does it, is this even relevant? Who, who cares, right? Uh, so if 40% of the users are very disappointed in this type of a survey, again, you're on to a very strong, validated business that you can get paid for. So defining your target, uh, find the greatest customer segment with the biggest pain, find the quickest path to reach them, Price, again, pick a customer segment that allows you to maximize on price. Start in small markets, go large. Timing, timing is all, is, is everything, as they say in show business, it's also true in marketing. Um, what are your, what is your budget and tactics? What is the right time to launch? A lot of e-commerce and retail shops need to be up and ready to launch for the holiday season, so that is a maximum of November 1st before they lose out on that holiday period from November 1 to January. Same is true online. If you're selling resort packages or you're doing tours for, to certain parts of the world and you know, busy season is, is January to March if it's, if it's down south, then you need to be promoting at least a couple of months in advance of that as people are making their buying decisions. So what are your competitors doing? What timing are they in market? How can you be different in how you approach the market? And is there any event that you can tie yourself from a marketing perspective that helps you launch into the market? Um, what's a good example of that? Anybody have an example of a good marketing event? I think Apple does a lot uh, at, the, at the, uh, all of their stores throughout the country with you know, POS on site, with emails out to existing customers. Do you have a question, sir? You're okay? Okay. Any questions at this point? I should stop. Just to respond to that question is who I've been really knocked out by. Oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to respond to that mm -hmm. interesting question of have you know who can you suggest as an example of a company or an organization that has been effective at us attaching their marketing message to an event. I'm a Rogers user, and by the way, I don't work for them. I'm so I, I'm <laughs> forbidden. I shouldn't have said their name, but I find their current marketing strategy stunning for consumers. They've got this whole, um, it, it's a two-tiered system, quickly. Um, I, I'm already a Rogers user, but soon um, the CRTC is going to dramatically impact competitiveness for those of us who buy um, our service provision. And so they're really ahead of the ball. And so I, I got this invitation by email, firstly, to join them on as, a, as a, a loyal customer for this special program. And what it is, is it's, it's called... Um, our points, I may have it wrong, but what it is is they gave me um, a gift certificate for $10 each month and I go to the, there, it's a network site, and I can buy different service provisions by other companies that are provided so there's, there's that wonderful relationship right there. And so I made to feel special because I'm getting a discount. I get a free magazine out of about 12 Canadian magazines I can choose from for a year. And then to add to that, they sent me a beautiful invitation by mail. So it felt like an event, mm -hmm. even though in a way Mm -hmm. It's just 
it's just something probably they could have done six months ago, they could have done a year ago, mm -hmm. but it felt like a strategic decision about an event, and I think it's really impressive because I know uh, it's the, you know the invitation. Like, oh, you're a loyal customer. Thank you so much for your you know your um, sir your uh, cu um, custom. And here's what we'd like to offer you. And w when I read it, I knew that I was one of probably eight or nine million loyal customers, but I felt like a million dollars because there was a bit of a one-on-one -on -one going on that I great that I yeah. So that. that's a good example. Um, other ones in sports, Adidas will launch at Dundas Square if it's tied to a basketball um, event. If you have a smaller, but not all of us have the brand power of Adidas, sorry. <laughs> if we're a local business, maybe there's a business association event that's happening in your community, like the Cabbage Town Festival that happens, Taste of the Danforth, and a bunch local level that you can attach yourself to, whether it's sponsorship or having a presence via booth or even you know, just showing up then that's a great, great way to launch your product or service. A couple of friends of mine launched a tiny little cafe in Hamilton during what's called Hamilton Art Crawl, which happens, I believe it's every month, and then once a year they have what's called Super Crawl, which is um, all night long, and it's all the businesses downtown Hamilton, and if you have a chance to go see it, it is incredible. It is really incredible, it's the way it's organized. Um, and it's to drive folks downtown to see all the different artists, products, shops, et cetera, that are open during that time. And so they attached themselves in the launch of their little coffee shop to this event and were quite successful um, because of that, because it's, it drove a lot of traffic in. They had the chance to meet with potential customers, give them their value proposition, not, not uh, formally like this, but <laughs> more informally, and um, attract them, keep them loyal, keep them going through that get, keep, grow funnel. So, Tactics that you should consider, and there's a number of different resources available to you online as well as through here. Today's session is an example of some resources for you. Online is a great way to drive people into your business, whether it is traditional or online and mobile, and you can do that through a number of means. If you're interested in learning more about how to use online or the web and mobile device to drive people into your business, go to the iabcanada.org. Everything you need is on that site, and there probably also is a lot of information here within the Toronto Reference Library in terms of actual book, uh, book material as well in sessions such as this. So both of those resources are good. Sorry, I, yep, as in... Ina, <laughs> A is in Andrew, B is in Bob. Canada.com is the website, ibcanada.com. And they cover all of this, actually. Sorry, online mobile email they cover. Print is another great example of reaching folks. And you can, you can you know, contact your local paper. You can offer to write blogs for the paper. You can offer to write an article about your business. Think less about pushing again the message out and how you can get really creative in approaching these different media to advertise your business. So approach writers. It's okay. If you have a strong value proposition, approach them. Say, hey, I'd love to write your fashion store. I'd love to write top 10 fashion tips for fall and then promote my business at the end. So these are how companies are starting to get, gain more mind share and access to customers. Uh, and then, of course, if you did want to do a display ad or print ad, you can film the classifieds. Um, so print out of home. So OOO is, um, what's a good example? Out of home, you're in the subway. There's a TV playing. That's an example of uh, advertising that's rolling out of home. Uh, anything that's out of home. So you're on the subway. The posters as you sit down are, are out of home. The billboards you see as you drive uh, down that stretch of Gardner between... <laughs> <laughs> Kipling and, and Spinina, um, that's out of home. And it's another great way of reaching folks. TV, not all of us have the budget to do a 30 second or a 60 second spot in the Super Bowl. Um, I know I don't. <laughs> if anybody uh, here does, let me know and there's a few businesses I want you to invest in. But, uh, so for TV, think local. Think of your local TV. A lot of these local TV stations need content. So think about how your business can produce really engaging, interesting content for their audiences. Pitch them, and you're off to the races. You can also pitch them on, on doing a smaller um, uh, TV commercial. And there's lots of resources to get 
15 or 30 second TV spots done. A great resource is, is elance.com, E-L-A-N-C-E.com. It's a platform that connects with creative designers and, and uh, videographers around the world. And so you post a project, project on elance.com and you have people actually bid on it. So if you had an interesting idea for a TV spot or online ad or mobile ad, print ad, whatever, you can post it there and people will bid on that project. It's really, a really great tool. What's the website again? Elance, E-L-A-N-C-E dot com. Um, events and PR. You don't need a Hill and Knowlton or a large PR, and no offense to anybody working at Hill and Knowlton, but who I work with daily, sorry. Uh, you don't need a large PR firm to do PR. PR can be done, each, each, every one of us can do it. If you can use a template or an example of a PR press release from the web or one that you've seen in the paper and repurpose it for your own business, go ahead and do it and use that and, and, pot, and, and target different media that reach your target audience. It's all about reaching the writers and bloggers and key influencers that reach your audience through your positioning statement and PR. So press release is just one example of PR. PR can also be messaging on blogs. It can be going out and joining the conversation across Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, appropriately joining the conversation, adding value. Remember when you're using those forms online, it's the same as if you're using them offline. You have to add value back to the user. Uh, word of mouth through social media. So social media is probably one of the most critical critical elements of raising awareness and driving folks into an online or mobile business from a startup perspective, but also probably from a, from a digital perspective as well. On Facebook now, I get, I get invited to many different associations, um, uh, businesses through Facebook. Some of them are appealing to me, some of them aren't, but Facebook is becoming my way of kind of connecting with different local businesses um, quite easy. So you could host an event, and a launch party, you could host uh, a discount evening at your local business. If you're an online or mobile product or service, you can use it as, as a marketing tool. A lot of retail sites use it. Um, there's a great, the great, a good example would be there's a store on Queen Street West called Lavish and Squalor. They have an amazing Facebook fan page. They'll do discount Mondays, send out notices about different inventory that's just come in, that's discounted. You can go into the store that evening and get a percentage off. So here's an example of a tactic and a media married together to reach your audience, track them into the, the store, and keep them. Any questions on that? Yeah. Um, when you reference Facebook, um, would I be correct in understanding that that is a business Just because I get the impression that it's quite essential to position yeah. as a business. Owner. Great question. So at work, how many of us get friend requests from colleagues at work? Anybody? For, for Facebook, specifically talking about Facebook? What we do now is, with clients, we'll say, if you have a fan page for your product or business, we'll join you there. But you should keep your Facebook, we believe that the best practice is to keep your personal Facebook page separate from your business. So if you do have a business, build a business uh, Facebook fan page. It's an incredible way to, and you, it's, you can invite your friends from the personal network, but um, build a Facebook fan page. And there's lots of resources online on how to do that. It's, it's relatively simple, believe it or not. Just do a Google search or come to the reference library and find information on it. Um, build a business Facebook fan page. Get users attracted to it. It's a great way to do kind of short form content. When I say short form, it's not you know, a, a blog of 500 words. It's very short, what we call tweetable uh, messages. So no more than 140 characters with an image. And imagery works big time, pardon the expression, in Facebook. If you have imagery that is really appealing to your target, group and you have a very compelling statement attached to that, such as my example with Lavish and, Lavish and Squalor, then it's a really great way of marketing your business without spending a fortune in print or other traditional media. Um, 
There it is again, sorry, IAB Canada. eMarketer is a really great tool if you're interested in marketing your business online or through the mobile device. Um, what else is relevant for you folks? Sean Ellis has a great startup marketing blog and the book Positioning by Al Reese is fantastic. Uh, things to know about online. And are we posting, are we posting this presentation? We can, yeah. Because it's probably worth posting it. There's a lot of resources in here that, uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because I don't want to confuse the heck out of you. <laughs> But IAB Canada has more information on online display SEM and video, and SEM is search engine marketing. SEO is search engine optimization. So the search engines, Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, et cetera, are incredibly important to driving traffic to your business if you have an online or mobile presence because what Google and other search engines do is use an algorithm to, to once you, once you search a keyword, push your, or, or, or raise a result in Google search results that is relevant to that user's search term. So I type in cars, it's going to pull up all the different, you know, car-based keyword businesses or content related to that keyword that I have searched for. And when you do a search on Google, I'm sure, I'm sure some of you have noticed the advertising component of Google when you get a search result. It's usually shaded, it says sponsored ad. Then there's what we call natural search results under that ad. So you can also pay to be in the first page of search results through Google or Yahoo or MSN by using what's called SEM, search engine marketing. To find more information about how you do that, go to Google Ad Solutions, Yahoo Ad Solutions, and Microsoft Ad Solutions, and they'll walk you through um, how you can bid and get, obtain an account to drive people into your website, whether it's a Facebook fan page or your own website or a mobile website using Google. And it's keywords. So what you do is you bid on keywords that your target customer is using to reach your business. So, what's a good example? I'm, if I'm looking for a Honda Civic and I type in Honda Civic, I'm likely going to get paid search results of local Honda dealers that have bid on those keywords coming up first. Or if I'm looking for a certain jean or a shoe, I'm going to get those different brands who have bought those keywords coming up first in my search result. So over 80% of people on Google who search will leave the first that will leave the first page of search results. So it's really important to be in that first page of Google search results. So when you get a response, usually the, you know, it'll say at the bottom, Google, right, one, two, three, four, into infinity in terms of your search results on Google. It's so important to be on that first page. So I've talked a little bit about pay, the, the, the way you bid on keywords or pay to be there. There's also a natural way of being there. So if you have a web or an online website, Again, Google is using a logarithm to crawl sites around the, web, around the globe, around the web, um, that are relevant to that search term to populate the search results. So if your site is tagged, named properly, if you've got authoritative links to your site, so other sites have, re have um, linked to you or you're linking out to authoritative sites, when I say authoritative site, it could be a CBC or another large site that had a lot of users. It could be a TechCrunch or a Globe and Mail, et cetera. This is why it's really important to be, when you do your PR activities, to also be reaching different media and key influencers at sites that have large audiences because you never know if they're going to link back to your site. So if you're a local bake shop, you might make that famous granola bar that everybody loves to come in and get on a Sunday morning between 7 and 8. Maybe the Food Network has, has written about that. Maybe your local paper has written about that. Not only does that story go in the print version or TV version, it also goes online. And so if they have an online site that is linking back to your store about that granola bar, um, that is big for you because what that means is it's an authoritative site linking back. Google views that. Uh, very well in terms of when they're out searching through the, and I'm talking about this as if it's a very slow process. It's a nanosecond, that's how quick it is, is when you search. But um, that's why it's important to, to have really strong content 
be reaching folks both from an online and traditional media perspective. And again, IAB Canada can walk you through this. Mobile is the same as online, except it's a smaller screen. You have to have a very short message, much, much shorter than you would online. Um, you can reach folks on the go, so you can do time of day targeting through BlackBerry iPhone and traditional mobile devices. Um, and check out admob.com for everything you need to know about how to use the mobile device to reach your target user. And there's also a mobile marketing association, there's a mobile advertising bureau out of the US, lots of information on how you can use the mobile device to reach, reach folks. And relatively untapped market. So when I've done advertising on the mobile device, on the handset, I've found a lot uh, higher click-through or a lot higher views of the ad through mobile because it's, there's less messaging on the device. So people are, and it's much more intimate. It's right there in the palm of your hand. So it's a very intimate ad. And so the response rates that we're seeing through mobile device, when I say mobile device, I mean everything. So tablet, um, your iPhone, your mini computer, et cetera. 